Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba' As we finish the treaties Of Nawaqid al-Islam By Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab We finish the ten uh, Naqid Or ten Nawaqid Of Islam I wanted to mention some various questions posed to the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, predominantly scholars of this time, regarding the, uh, re- these are beneficial questions regarding uh, the Nawaqid al Islam, regarding some of those issues and issues pertaining to this. Sheikh Muhammad bin Saleh bin Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, was asked, what is the ruling regarding giving a disbeliever money or a gift with the intention of making them receptive towards Islam? The Shaykh answered, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, there is no problem with giving a disbeliever a gift or giving them a home or living in a place for the purpose of making him receptive towards Islam. However, it is imperative to put things in perspective so that the person being invited to Islam is actually a person who has an interest in Islam. As for the one who is... As for the one who is one of the leaders of disbelief, who has no desire to embrace Islam, then he should not be given anything except for the purpose of repelling his harm. Uh, Also, the Sheikh was asked, when inviting someone to Islam, should we explain to them the ruling regarding apostasy? The Sheikh said, it is not permissible to mention the ruling regarding apostasy because that contradicts the invitation to Islam but instead one should mention the good things in Islam and that a person will be saved from the punishment of the hellfire and Allah will make the one who embraces Islam from amongst the pious people etc as for mentioning the ruling regarding apostasy this is like saying embrace Islam and if you leave Islam we will execute you. This is not permissible because it will scare people away from Islam. Sheikh Salim bin Fozan, Havadullah Ta'ala was asked, what is the ruling regarding the person who leaves all outward actions of faith but he still utters the testimony of faith and believes in the obligatory duties but never acts, uh, but never acts upon any of them? Is he a Muslim or not? It should also be known that he has no Islamic excuse for not performing those obligations and he is able to fulfill them. The Shaykh said, or uh, half of the Allah Ta'ala, he said, this person is not a believer. Whoever believes in his heart and exhibits faith in his speech but does not act upon it and does not do any, de- any deeds whatever, whatsoever without a legitimate excuse is not a believer. This is because faith comprises all that we have mentioned. Just as Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah holds that faith is comprised of statements of the tongue, belief in the heart, and actions of the limbs. And faith cannot be attained except with all three components. And whoever leaves off any of those three components is not a believer. The Shaykh was also asked, what is considered the major disbelief or apostasy? Is it restricted to creed and obstinacy and lying regarding acceptance of belief or more general than that? The Shaykh replied, disbelief and apostasy occur when one of the nullifiers of faith well known to the scholars are violated. Therefore, whoever falls into one of these sins without the excuse of ignorance is considered an apostate and disbeliever and is for us to judge him according to that which is apparent from his statement or action because it is only upon us to make a judgment by what is evident. As for what is concealed in his heart, only Allah the Almighty and the Magnificent knows this. So whoever utters disbelief or an action of disbelief, then we judge him according to his saying or action, if it is an action or saying of apostasy, unless he is excused due to ignorance or force, and this is regarding things that are clear according to the Quran and the Sunnah, like the major shirk and disbelief. As for things that are ambiguous, then it is incumbent to make things clear so that the person who has erred understands correctly. Uh, Another question the Shaykh was asked, There are some people 
whose faith is verbal and belief and deeds. But deeds are a condition for the completeness of faith. Also, they say that disbelief can only occur by false belief. By false belief. Is this a saying from amongst the sayings of Ahl Sunnah or not? So the question's a little bit unclear. The one who says that that does not understand faith, the one who says that does not understand faith, nor does he understand creed, and that is what we mentioned in the introduction. It is an obligation to study creed with the scholars and gain the understanding from the correct sources. And here is the answer to that question. His statement that faith is saying belief is saying belief and deeds. Then he states that deeds are a condition of completeness of faith. And its soundness is a contradiction. How can he say deeds are from faith? Then it is a condition of it. It is well known that a condition comes before the action or thing, that it restricts or defines, and deeds are a part of faith to Ahl Sunnah, not a condition for them. So this is a contradiction. This individual wants to join between the statements of the Salaf and the later scholars regarding this issue and he does not understand the contradiction. This is because he does not know the statements of the Salaf and he does not understand the correct understanding of the later scholars and he wants to merge their statements. Therefore, faith is sayings, belief, and deeds, and deeds are from faith. And faith increases with obedience to Allah and decreases with disobedience. This is what Ahl Sunnah believes, the classical and modern day scholars, which contradicts the Murjiyah. Uh, another question the Shaykh was asked Is the prayer correct behind an Imam who seeks help from the dead and asks for their assistance? Is it correct behind a man who lies intentionally and harms the righteous? Should a person who lies and is known for sinfulness lead the prayer? The Shaykh answered, The prayer behind a person who seeks assistance from the dead is incorrect because it is the major shirk which expels a person from the religion. Therefore, his prayer is not accepted, and neither is those whose pray, whose, who pray behind him, because he is not a Muslim. It is a condition for an imam to be a practicing believer in Allah and his messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, openly and in private. As for lying and harming the righteous, then this is one of the major sins which is unlike shirk, because it is not disbelief. However, this person is, un is unsuitable to lead the prayer. However, whoever comes late to the prayer and finds him leading it should join in behind him and not pray by himself unless he finds a righteous imam, then he should pray behind him. Beautiful tafsil by Allama uh, Sheikh Salih bin Fawzan. Another question the Sheikh was asked, he said, there are some individuals who refrain from learning about Tawheed and they believe all the people are believers in Tawheed in the land of monotheism and they have no need to learn about Tawheed. So what is your op opinion regarding that? The Sheikh said, if we ask this individual what is Tawheed, explain it to us. He would not be able to explain it. And if we ask how many pillars of Islam are there? How many pillars of Iman? What is Ihsan? He wouldn't be able to clarify those things and he says he believes in Tawheed. How can he how can he be on Tawheed if he does not understand it? If we asked him, what is shirk and its types? What expels a person from the religion and what does not? What is hypocrisy and its various types? He wouldn't be able to explain those things. And he considered himself a believer in Tawheed, but rather he is a believer in rhetoric only. The one who says, who says that is ignorant of Tawheed. And of the fact that the Prophet wasallam called to Tawheed 13 years in Mecca and that Nuh wasalam, propagated to his people 950 years. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no other God but Him. He said, O oh my people, verily I am a plain warner to you that you, you would worship Allah, fear Him and obey me. 
He will forgive you of your sins and respite you to an appointed term. Verily, the term of Allah, when it comes, cannot be delayed, but if you but knew. He said, O my Lord, verily I have called to my people night and day, but all of my calling added nothing but to their flight from the truth. And verily, every time I called unto them that you might forgive them, they thrust their fingers in their ears, covered themselves up with their garments, and persisted in magnifying themselves in pride. Then verily I called to them openly. Then verily I proclaimed to them in public, and I have appealed to them in private. Tawheed is not a simple matter. It requires that it is given its due importance and it is studied. It is not sufficient to say, I am a monotheist and you do not know its meaning or what nullifies it and its opposite. Are you stronger? Are you a stronger monotheist? monotheist than Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam when he supplicated, O oh my Lord, make this city one of peace and security and keep me and my sons away from worshiping idols. O oh my Lord, they have indeed led astray many among mankind, but whosoever follows me, verily he is of me. He was afraid of shirk. So the one who says he is a believer in monotheism, should fear Allah the Almighty because he is either ignorant or he is misguided and wants to misguide people away from studying the correct belief. So that was the answer of Shaykh Salih bin Fuzan, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala. Also the Shaykh was asked, are the Muslims in the West excused due to ignorance if they have incorrect creed as there are no scholars in the West? Beautiful question, very applicable for us. The Shaykh replied, A person who can find someone who can teach them and clarify for them is not excused by ignorance. There are scholars in the West all praise due to Allah and the East. There are various means of propagating the religion of Allah and clarifying the correct creed and pro uh, prohibiting shirk and false beliefs. Likewise, books are available, so there is no excuse for them. Allah the Almighty has provided evidence for all mankind and there is no excuse left except for those who are cut off and have had nothing from guidance reach them and have not heard or read anything. And this is rare and that which is rare has no ruling to be applied to it. Shaykh Rabi uh, bin Hadi al-Madkhali Ta'ala was asked is a person who falls into a sin which nullifies one's faith excused by ignorance? The Shaykh replied, if he, is, uh, if he is in a Muslim land and Islam is practiced openly, then, there, then this person is not excused. As for someone who has never been given the message or he lives in a country that is mostly filled with shirk, in innovation, then he is excused by ignorance until he has evidence presented to him and clarified. Because Allah the Almighty said, This Quran has been revealed to me that I may therewith warn you and whomsoever it may reach. Allah also said, And whoever contradicts and opposes the messenger after the right path has been shown clearly to him and follows other than the believer's way, we shall keep him in the path he has chosen and burn him in hell. What an evil destination. Wa'iyadu billah. For this reason, many of the Imams of the Salaf, from, uh, from the most dignified and respected of them, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, held the view that a person could be excused due to ignorance, even in affairs of shirk and disbelief. A person could fall into shirk or disbelief out of ignorance without evidence being presented to him from the Quran or Sunnah that those matters are disbelief or shirk, so he would be excused. For example, a person stops praying. This person is considered a disbeliever by majority of the companions and hadith scholars. So this is a nullifier of faith to those who consider the person who abandons a prayer to be a disbeliever. However, if no one has ever told him about the obligation of prayer or fasting or any other obligation and he is a new Muslim who loves Islam and no one has ever told him this is a pillar from the pillars of Islam and it is compulsory then he is excused therefore the truth should be explained to him and he continues to reject and if he continues to reject the prayer and deny that it is from Islam then he is a disbelieving apostate 
And those were just some of the benefits from the scholars pertaining to uh, things which nullify a person's Iman in totality and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.